Good morning everyone and welcome to our next class of the Merchant of Venice. In our previous act we had seen how Bassanio receives a letter from Antonio and he leaves immediately after getting married to Portia. He leaves for Venice. Portia and Nerissa, both of them, dress up as boys and they too leave for Venice, leaving Lorenzo and Jessica in charge of the mansion while they are away. In Act 4, we shall see what takes place in court. Therefore, this is said to be the trial scene. Act 4, Scene 1 Enter the Duke, Magnificos, Antonio, Bassanio, Graciano, Slario and others. This is the trial scene. We see the Duke and the others who are present over here. The Duke informs Antonio that his opponent Shylock is a cruel person. Antonio knows the situation and thanks the Duke because he has tried his best to convince Shylock to be sympathetic. Now Antonio is ready to face the circumstances. Duke, what is Antonio here? He asks, is Antonio here? And Antonio says, ready, so please your grace. Yes, your grace, I am ready. You. I am sorry for thee, thou art come to answer, a stony adversary, an inhuman wretch, incapable of pity, void and empty from any dram of mercy. The Duke, he tells Antonio that he feels sorry for him. He feels that he had come to defend himself against an adversary with a heart of stone, an inhuman wretch who doesn't know what pity is, quite lacking even in the slightest quality of mercy. Antonio, I have heard your grace had taken great pains to qualify his rigorous course, but since he stands obdurate and that no law means can carry me out of his envy's reach, I do oppose my patience to his fury. Antonio says that he has heard that his grace, that is the Duke, has taken great pains to soften the severity of the proceedings. But since Shylock remains obstinate and there are no lawful means of rescuing him from his malice, from his envy, he shall meet his spite with a spirit of patience. To suffer with a quietness of spirit the very tyranny and rage of his. That means he has braced himself to suffer with a quiet spirit the utmost that his tyranny and rage can do. And the Duke says, go one and call the Jew into the court. So he says, go somebody and call the Jew into the court. Slario he is ready at the door. He comes, my lord. Means he is waiting at the door. He is coming, my lord. Enter Shylock. Duke, make room and let him stand before our face. He says, give space and let Shylock stand before me. And then he addresses Shylock. Shylock, the world thinks and I think so too. He tells him that the world thinks and he too thinks that thou but leadest this fashion of thy malice to the last hour of act. And then tis thought thou show thy mercy and remorse more strange than is thy strange apparent cruelty. He tells Shylock that not only does the world think but he too thinks that Shylock only keeps on 
in his revengeful spirit till the case is in its last stages. And then it is thought that he will suddenly show mercy and repentance in a way which is much more unexpected and strange than his strange cruelty. He goes on and says, And where thou now exactest the penalty, and which is a pound of this poor man, merchant's flesh, thou wilt not lose the forfeiture, but untouched with human gentleness and love, forgive a moiety of the principal. The Duke tells him that it is said that whereas now Shylock is insisting on claiming the penalty, namely the pound of the poor man's flesh, he will not only agree to abandon his claim, but will, according to human gentleness and love, they will expect that he will even forgive him the payment of some portion of the original sum of 3,000 ducats. When he looks sympathetically at the losses which he has lately suffered in plenty. Here the Duke is trying to tell Shylock to show mercy upon Antonio. He tells him that not only the world but he too thinks that Shylock will at the later stages he will show mercy and repentance which will be stranger than the cruelty which he exhibits. He says that they expect that not only will he show mercy, but he will also forgive a part of the penalty of the 3,000 ducats which Antonio owes to him because Antonio has suffered a great loss. He goes on to say that forgive a moiety means a part of the principle that is the 3000 ducats glancing an eye of pity on his losses seeing the losses which Antonio has suffered that have of late so huddled on his back which have lately because of the fact that all his ships have all the ships have been wrecked and so he has suffered a great loss and thereby Shylock will take pity upon his losses. He will take pity on Antonio and forgive him a part of the principal amount. And now to press a royal merchant down and pluck commiseration of his state here says that the losses have been so severe that they can ruin a merchant prince. And not only that, they may also draw pity for his condition from brassy bosoms and rough hearts of flint, from stubborn Turks and Tartars, never trained to offices of tender courtesy. He says that his losses are so severe that they draw pity for his condition from bosoms hard as brass and rough stony hearts from uncultured Turks and Tartars who have never been schooled in the feelings of human kindness. Meaning that even the Turks and the Tartars who have never felt any human kindness, even they too would take pity on a merchant like Antonio because of the losses that he has suffered. We all expect a gentle answer, Jew. And so he tells Shylock, we all expect a gentle answer from you. Shylock says in reply, I have possessed your grace of what I purpose. Means I have informed your grace, that is the Duke, of my intentions. And by our holy Sabbath have I sworn to have the due and forfeit of my bond. 
and so he says that he has sworn by the holy sabbath that is the holy festival of the jews that he will have the full penalty which is incurred by the failure to keep the contract if you deny it let the danger light upon your charter and your city's freedom so he tells him that if you refuse me this if you refuse to give me my penalty you refuse to give me the forfeiture of the bond you if you refuse me this you will endanger the municipal charter and freedom of your city you will ask me why i rather choose to have a weight of carrion flesh than to receive 3000 ducats so he tells the duke he says you ask me why i would rather have a quantity of dead flesh that is carrion flesh rather than the 3000 ducats i will give no answer to that except that i please to do so he says he does not have to answer him except that he pleases to do so it is up to him why he wants to have the carrion flesh and in you know than to take the 3000 ducats but say it is my humor means it is his pleasure is it answered what if my house be troubled with a rat and i be pleased to give 10000 ducats to have it banned what are you answered yet some men there are love not a gaping pig some are mad if they behold a cat and others when the bagpipe sings in the nose so he goes on to give examples and he says you ask me why i prefer to receive a quantity of dead flesh rather than 3000 ducats says i will give no answer to that except that i please to do so is that sufficient answer for you what does it matter to any person if my house is troubled by a rat and i choose to spend 10000 ducats to have it poisoned is that answer satisfactory there are certain men who have an aversion who dislike gaping pigs others who fly into a passion at the sight of a cat some people cannot maintain their usual balance of conduct when they hear the shrill notes of the bagpipe cannot contain the urine for affection master of passion sways it to the mood of what it likes or loathes personal inclination is the ruler of passion and inclines it towards liking or disliking now this is my answer to you so he says this is how i would like to answer you as there is no firm reason to be rendered why he cannot abide a gaping pig why he a harmless necessary cat why he a wool a woolen bagpipe but of course must yield to such inevitable shame as to offend himself being offended so can i give no reason so he goes on to say that just as there is no definite reason to be rendered why one man cannot bear or cannot endure a gaping pig why another man is enraged by a harmless domestic cat and another by the sounds of the wool covered bagpipe so i can give you no definite reason and i will not try to give you a reason i will not try to give one more than this that i have a deep rooted hatred and definite loathing for antonio so here he is trying to tell him that people do not give reasons because it is what they like or what they dislike so therefore he says gives particular reasons by saying so can i give no reason nor i will not he does not want to give any reasons why is he taking the carrion flesh but yet at the same time he says more than a lodged hate that he is taking the carrion flesh 
because of a lodged hate, because of a deeply rooted hatred that he has for Antonio and a certain loathing, a certain dislike that he bears or for Antonio. That I follow thus a losing suit against him. That I follow thus a losing suit means and therefore I pursue this unprofitable suit against him. That means that he is gaining nothing by taking the carrion flesh. But he wants it only because he dislikes Antonio. And this was the only chance that he could ever get to take the revenge that he wanted from Antonio. And so he says, are you answered? Have you got your answer? Why I want a pound of flesh instead of 3,000 ducats. And Bassanio was there with Antonio. He says, but this is no answer, thou unfeeling man. <clears throat> this is not a satisfactory answer at all, you unfeeling man, to excuse the cruelty of your actions. Shylock, I am not bound to please thee with my answers. It means I am under no obligation to make my answers please you. I don't have to satisfy you with my answers. Do all men kill the things they do not love? So he says, Bassanio says, do, do all men kill anything that they don't like? And Shylock hates any man the thing he would not kill. Means, is there any man who does not kill the thing that he truly hates? Bassanio, every offence is not hate at first. Means, every fault need not be turned into cause for hatred. Shylock, what? Wouldst thou have a serpent sting thee twice? And he tells him what? Would you give an enemy a second chance to hurt you? And Antonio goes on, I pray you, think you question with the Jew. So Antonio, he tells Bassanio, please don't argue with the Jew. You may as well go and stand upon the beach and bid the main flood bait his usual height. You may as well use question with the wolf. Why? He hath made the eve bleat for the lamb. You may as well forbid the mountain pines to wag the high tops and to make no noise when they are threatened with the gust of heaven. You may as well do anything most hard as seek to soften that than which what's harder. Antonio tells Bassanio not to argue with the Jew. He tells Bassanio that you might as well stand on the sea, on the seashore and ask the tide not to rise so high as usual. You might as well ask the wolf why he made the mother sheep cry for the lamb which he ate. You might as well forbid the pine trees, tell the pine trees on the mountains to wave their high tops and to make a noise when disturbed by the winds of heaven. You might as well attempt the hardest thing in the world rather than attempt a thing which is still harder and that is to soften a Jew's heart. You can do all the most impossible things but you cannot soften the Jew's heart. His Jewish heart, therefore I do beseech you, make no more offers, use no further means, but with all brief and plain conveniency, let me have the judgment and the Jew his will. And so he tells Bassanio, so I request you not to make him more offers and try for any further steps, but with all due you know, with all due speed, put the judgment into execution on me by letting the Jew have his wish. So no matter how or whichever way anyone tries to tell Shylock to show mercy upon Antonio, he 
completely refuses and does not want to relent at all. The Duke tried his best. Bassanio tried giving him as much money as Shylock wanted, but yet no one could make him change his mind. And so Antonio then says, let him have the judgment. Let the Jew have what he wishes. Let him have his wish. I'm going to stop here. Please read and go through the video time and again. We will continue the rest of scene one in the next video for part two of act four, scene one. Till then, take care. Goodbye.